Hey, what's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about the slimmest and most incredible foldable smartphone on the market. Be prepared for the Huawei Mate X3. The Huawei Mate X3 is an exceptionally slim foldable phone. Measuring at just around 11 millimeters in its folded state, it's not that much thicker than a standard flagship phone. Once you unfold the Mate X3, it measures at just 5.3 millimeters, which is mind blowing. Due to the new compact hinge, both halves remain flush and also ensure for pretty much a non-existent display crease. The front of the device features a quad-curved external display that gently slopes on all four edges. This is a first on a foldable phone too. Huawei is especially proud of the so-called Kunlun protective front glass that's apparently 10 times more shadow resistant than its predecessor. The Mate X3 also comes with an IPX8 rating, which means it's waterproof up to 2 meters, unless many other foldables. This makes the phone even more durable and guarantees a long life of your device. Now here guys is a quick test. Now guys, another amazing feature of the Huawei Mate X3 is the IPX8 rating. That means it's waterproof up to 2 meters. Um, that doesn't mean you should go swimming with it, but if you accidentally drop it into water, that's no problem at all or use it outdoor in the rain. IPX8 means waterproof up to 2 meters, but it doesn't mean it's fully dustproof. But to demonstrate that, I will just sink it here in my pond. And guys, there we go. So you can submerge it into water. That's no problem at all. But as you can see, the phone will actually not take any damage. You can even fold it here, put it folded in the water. That's no problem at all because the IPX8 rating, as I've said, it's waterproof up to two meters. So if you accidentally drop it somewhere, um, in a pond or in the toilet, that's no problem at all. And also if you need to rinse it off after, then as you can see, you can easily rinse it off and the phone will not take any damage. So the phone is very well protected and even if you close it really fast, nothing happens and outside you have Kunlun glass. So it's a really, really durable foldable phone. The external display is a 6.4 inch LTPO OLED panel with a dynamic 1 120 Hz refresh rate and 1080 x 2504 pixel resolution. This provides an extremely smooth scrolling experience and the inner 7.85 inch LTPS OLED display with 2224 x 2496 pixels is just as sharp and bright as the external screen. The rest of the Mate X3 feels very solid as well. The phone's frame is made out of aluminum, which has great tensile strength and the build quality is excellent. Now Huawei also somehow managed to implement a 4800 mAh battery into the razor thin 5.3mm body of the Mate X3. Now that's a huge battery for a foldable and it easily lasts one day of use. It also comes with a 66 watts wall adapter included and it fully charges the Huawei Mate X3 in roughly 40 minutes, which is extremely fast for a foldable phone too. Especially with battery and charging technology, Huawei smartphones are usually always superior to the competition. Then it also supports 50 watts wireless charging and if you wish to reverse charge another device wirelessly, you can do that too. The Mate X3 has a fingerprint sensor embedded into the side position power button and also supports face unlock. Now camera wise it comes with a 50 megapixel f1.8 main camera, a 30 megapixel f2.2 camera, a 12 megapixel periscope that's capable of reaching up to 5x optical and 50x digital zoom. And also finally we have two 8 megapixel selfie cameras existing as punch holes on both the external and internal screens. And of course the phone is capable of recording up to 4K at 60fps video footage. The Mate X3 is a very compelling camera performer during the day. Photos taken with it are usually first class with really great image dynamics and quite good dynamic range, but it's not on the level of the P60 Pro. Still, it has for me the best camera I've seen in a foldable smartphone as there are many challenges to put a big camera system in such a small and compact foldable. And it's also powered by Xmage with color presets and super accurate color reproduction. Thanks to the 5x periscope lens, the Huawei Mate X3 is very capable when it comes to capturing distant objects. In fact, the full range between the ultra wide and 5x is extremely usable, with 10x zoom probably being the furthest I would recommend zooming in Anything past that will actually degrade the image quality a lot. Now video quality is very decent too and it's capable of recording up to 4K 60fps on all the main cameras. 
Also selfie videos are quite good and here's a quick example of the video quality on the Mate X3. So guys, this is a quick front-facing camera test on the Huawei Mate X3. And well, it has two front-facing cameras, but what is the actual difference? Well, there's one front-facing camera when the phone is folded, so when it's closed. This is the camera I'm using right now. But when you unfold the phone, there's another front-facing camera inside. Now, in video mode, I've um, noticed that the outside camera, so when it's folded, um, is capable of 4K 30fps recording. And the inside camera is actually uh, capable of 4K 60fps. So we'll now switch to the inside camera, so we'll open up the phone and I'll show you the quality there. So let's go. So this is now the camera on the inside, so when you unfold the phone, and it's capable of 4K 60 recording. Which is quite strange because actually when you vlog, you want maybe to have the phone closed, so you want to maybe have 4K 60 on the outside camera. But I do understand that um, when you need a bigger screen, for instance for video calls or something like this, you maybe want the front-facing camera has better capabilities. So while we decided to put 4K 60 on the inside camera, the outside camera is 4K 30. So just keep that in mind. Now when it comes to the software experience itself, the Mate X3 comes with EMUI 13.1 on board, running on top of Android 13. EMUI 13 has plenty of implementations for multitasking and is very customizable with themes, wallpapers and widgets. There's no Google Mobile Services pre-installed, but there's a great workaround for it and I will show you how that works now during a quick hands-on session. So guys, let's come to my favorite part and this is the hands-on experience and with the Huawei Mate X3 it's really a special experience. So let's check it out and let's have a closer look. Well, um, if you ever had a foldable smartphone in your hands, um, depending on the brand and model, um, sometimes it really feels like you're holding two phones stacked on top of each other. What I mean with that is basically that on some foldable smartphones from other brands, there is a gap between the two halves here. They're quite bulky and huge, and it really feels like you have two phones in your hands. But on the Mate X3, it really feels just like one normal smartphone. And if you compare this to the Huawei P60 Pro, then you can actually see there is not a big difference in terms of the screen. So it has a very similar layout and you can use the Mate X3 um, close just like a normal smartphone and that really makes it really special. So you don't have any huge borders. As you can see, we have here curved Kunlun glass. So you really get this single smartphone experience when the Mate X3 is folded. But when you need a bigger screen and you unfold it, then you get this huge and beautiful looking screen. Also, Huawei designed the hinge in a special way that the crease in the middle, which is basically something you have on every foldable smartphone, it is almost invisible. Now, I will try to clean this up and show you a little bit, but it's really hard to even catch it in the camera. Here maybe you can slightly see it, but this is only because of the studio light here. Otherwise, in normal use, you actually don't see the crease. And also, um, you almost cannot feel it. So it feels like just one single huge screen. Now Huawei has shown with the initial Huawei Mate X that they really know how to design foldable smartphones. That they really put a lot of R&D into the hinge, into the whole design of the smartphone to make it not only durable, but also give you the best experience on a foldable screen. Also, this is the slimmest foldable smartphone. Now, there are some other smartphone manufacturers out there that claim that their phone is slimmer, but no, it's actually not. Um, the Huawei Mate X3 is really the slimmest one, and you can see it here on the USB-C port. So they just barely managed to fit in here the port because the whole thickness of um, the screen here, as you can see with the whole body of the smartphone, is just like the size of a USB Type-C port. All right, then let's have a closer look on what we have um, around the frame here. So we have a dual speaker setup. So as you can see, one speaker here, one speaker here. There is the dual um, SIM card slot, but you can also put in Huawei NM cards to extend the memory. And for foldable smartphone, this is like the only foldable smartphone where you can extend the memory. Not with micro SD cards, but at least Huawei NM cards. Also, they managed to fit in a fingerprint scanner into the power button. And also the fingerprint scanner works really reliable. So it's just here in the power button. And it's really natural to unlock the phone. There's also the volume rocker here, the type C port down here, holes for the microphones. And here, this beautiful hinge here and that polished Chrome look. 
Now, um, there are two versions, just as I've told you, of the Huawei Mate X3. But here we have that um, synthetic leather version, as you can see, in that green, which looks really nice. And the good thing is there are no fingerprints on the back. So that's also something that's amazing. The only thing which catches a bit of fingerprints here is the side here, but the rest, it's really easy also to clean. Now here you can see the camera setup, and of course it stands a little bit out because this phone is incredibly thin with the foldable screen, so it has to stand out, and they even put in a periscope camera, which is also the world's first in a foldable smartphone. Absolutely crazy. All right, then let's have a closer look at the software and the display, so what you can do here. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the screen. So we have 120 hertz on the outside and 120 hertz on the inside. And even though they're different screens, um, they're very well calibrated. So you cannot really see a color difference between the inside screen and the outside screen. So they have the same color reproduction and they seem to be very accurate in displaying colors as, as well. If we go here to the settings, to display and brightness, um, you can keep it in automatic brightness, then it goes well to over 1000 nits. So even in outdoor use, outdoor, it's really, really bright. And EMUI also offers a dark mode, which works very well together with the AMOLED display, even to save a little bit of battery life. And um, here you can see smart resolution. You can turn this on, so it will scale the resolution to um, preserve battery life. And also here you can adjust the refresh rate of the screen. So um, there, I keep it right now on high just for testing. So this is 120 hertz for all the time. But also there is dynamic, which basically just scales up um, the refresh rate when you need it. For instance, um, if there's a movie playback or if you're gaming. And if you don't need it, if you're just in the menu, it will just um, decrease the refresh rate to save battery and save power. And here in standard, as you can see, you can also limit both displays to a refresh rate of 60 Hertz. But overall, both of the displays look really stunning and you cannot tell them apart in terms of color reproduction. Now there's one question I get always asked when I showcase a new Huawei smartphone and this is, does it run Android? Well, it kind of runs Android, but with Huawei's EMUI on top and um, it doesn't come with the Google mobile services, but I will show you later a little workaround for that. Now, it's featuring the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 4G mobile platform. Because Huawei cannot use 5G SOCs, we're limited here to 4G. But for me personally, 4G is definitely enough in terms of speed. But if you want to have 5G, then well, I have to disappoint you here. Anyway, it comes with Wi-Fi 6 for fast um, network transfer anyway. It comes with Bluetooth, it comes with NFC, and also it integrates Huawei Super Device to work together with other Huawei devices. As you can see, it detects here my MatePad paper, which I really love, and also the P60 Pro. And um, other than that, EMUI is very customizable, so you have plenty of themes, always on display options, wallpapers, icons. I can show you that a little bit later. The display and brightness can be adjusted here. We just had a look at that before, and you can also set different color modes um, here for the display, even set it to vivid for more poppy colors. Other than that, um, as I've told you before, it comes with a fingerprint scanner, but something that is really overlooked is also the face recognition. Now, even though it's not face ID, the face recognition on Huawei smartphones works incredibly well, and is also quite secure, and it's very fast. Then um, the battery life. So um, there's also wireless reverse charging included. So if you want to charge your accessories, you can switch it on here. Now this version is the version with 512 gigabytes of memory. But as I said before, you can extend it with NM cards. And of course there are some other things included like HMS Core, um, Huawei Assistant, and we'll dive in that a little bit later on. But what do you do with so much screen? Now this is a legit question I get asked many times when I showcase a foldable smartphone with a big screen on the inside. And the answer is multitasking, split screen, multi-window. But of course the operating system, or basically the launcher on top of Android, needs to support it very well. And the EMUI 13 is pretty much optimized for multitasking. Now um, let me show you what I mean with that. So if you just go to your open apps in the background, you see this little icon right over here. And this icon means that pop-up view is available. This will open up this app here um, as a little window which you can drag around the screen. So you can watch, for instance, here a YouTube video while doing something else. 
but also I will show you now how to use um, the split screen mode, which is really cool. So you can have one app on the left side, one app on the right side of the phone. For that, you just swipe here to the inside to open up here this app drawer on the side. And then um, here you can choose any application to run next to the application you have currently on. Now it's a little bit complicated if you do it for the first time, but once you get used to it, it's really easy to do. So let's say we want to, um, I don't know, message someone in Telegram and watch a YouTube video. Then we can open it up here and now we just drag it here on top and there we are now here in split screen mode. So here on the left side we have YouTube open. We can just scroll through YouTube, answer to some comments and here we can for instance chat with a friend um, for the video you're watching for. So EMUI 13 um, has plenty of optimizations for using it here um, in multi-window or split screen mode and it's really a lot of fun to use it and to work more productive. But here's the main question. What about apps on Huawei smartphones? How to use Google apps on Huawei smartphones? And well, there are simple solutions for that and you're not limited to staying away from Google, but also Huawei gives you plenty of options to not use Google. And let me show you what I mean with that. Now, first of all, um, you have pre-installed the Huawei app gallery. So the app gallery improved really a lot. So there are plenty of apps in there. For instance, I'm from Austria and 99% of the local Austrian apps um, are in the Huawei app gallery. So there's really a lot of applications. My banking apps are in there. They're fully supported from the bank, coded for the Huawei ecosystem, for the app gallery, and 100% safe to use. So I read a lot of comments on the P60 series that banking is not safe. That's absolutely not true. So check um, the Huawei app gallery if your bank is in there. If it's in there, you are safe to go. Then also, um, some people asked me about using um, mobile payments. So here you can see Huawei Wallet and in there you can add cards, you can pay and it works also the same by just closing it and double pressing the power button to pay with it. Um, Huawei Pay, if it's supported in your country, my country it's supported, it works via the blue code service and there you can pay with um, your bank account and in order to do that you first need to set up um, your um, bank and your um, card and you can actually do that in the application. So my bank is the Erste Bank in Austria. And as you can see, it's um, supported here. So you just enter um, here your details. It will connect to the bank and then you can securely pay with your smartphone. And it works really well. So instead of using Google Pay, why not giving it a try and try Huawei Pay? So as I've told you before, the app gallery is probably your number one source for applications when you want to install an application. Now, when you don't find the application, you can actually use Petal Search to search for the application, or you can also use APK Pure or the Aurora Store, which is also running fine on Huawei to um, search for APKs. But if you need Google applications, you can install Gbox. Now, Gbox is an application that is available in the Huawei App Gallery. So if you search for Gbox, you will find it in the Huawei App Gallery. You just install Gbox and with Gbox, you can access all the Google applications and run them. It works with YouTube, it works with Gmail, it works with business accounts. So it's basically a virtual machine with Google mobile services running on your smartphone. But the Mate X3, same as the P60 Pro, have plenty of power to do that. And also it's quite secure as it runs local on your account. So this is currently my go-to solution. Um, once you have installed the application, you get here some suggestions. You can just hold it and create a shortcut and then you will have the shortcut on the home screen. So let me show you how that looks like. We have YouTube here. It opens YouTube in Gbox. And as you can see, I am logged in. I can use all the features just like on a smartphone with Google mobile services. But also there's a little neat way on how to get more apps in Gbox and you open for instance any third party application like Twitter. You um, press on the name of the company here and then you get a search. And within this search you can now search for any application you want to like I was downloading Genjin Impact. And then you just go to Genjin Impact and you go to install and it will just download in the background the game or whatever application you want to install. So like this you can also swipe here for the Google Play Store and this is the easiest and most convenient way to access um, Google Apps and also to use them and run them 
without um, having any limitations. So as you can see, it's not complicated to get apps on Huawei smartphones. It's just a bit different and it's the same way secure, just like on a smartphone with Google Mobile services. But guys, what about the gaming performance? Now, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is not the fastest SoC, but it has really plenty of power to run basically all the latest games. So it doesn't matter what you play. And as you can see, also the apps can scale very well to that screen form factor. Also Genshin Impact, for instance, which is a very graphic intense game, runs really well. And I'll now show you also how gaming looks on the Mate X3. So guys, this is the best example that gaming on a foldable smartphone can be plenty of fun. So I like to turn it this way because um, the Mate X3 has stereo speakers. So um, you're not covering them. You have the speaker pair here and you get really great sound. So the speaker on the Mate X3 sounds also really good. And as you can see, uh, most of the game stays um, scale pretty well to that screen. Even the UI here it scales perfectly and playing on a bigger screen is definitely much more fun than playing on the smaller smartphone screen. But even if you want to, you can just close it and as you can see, um, it will just um, continue on the other screen. This is so crazy. Just if you want to open it up, if for instance, if there's a quest where you need to read something that is a small text, you can open it up and play like this and continue. So gaming on the Mate X3 is really plenty of fun. And the Snapdragon processor in um, the Mate X3 also has plenty of power for all the latest games. Alrighty guys, so we're now here at the end of this video and I really hope that you have enjoyed it. And I could use the Huawei Mate X3 now for well over two weeks. And I have to say it's really a fantastic device. Great battery life, really absolutely amazing build quality, stunning screens, and also the software with EMUI 13 um, is just working really well on that. And you can really utilize that big screen and also the performance, especially as we've seen gaming performance is quite nice. So overall a great device. Now the price tag is maybe a little bit heavy, but considering that this is the slimmest, world slimmest, foldable smartphone with the best camera and foldable with ex ex extendable memory um, with beautiful screens. Um, it's almost to say a fair price tag. Alrighty guys, if you have any questions about the Huawei Mate X3, write some comments down below. And as always guys, um, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.